All right, so what we're going to tie here is just this uh, millworm grub pattern that I do. These things are really good for ice fishing. Uh, you know, you can also throw them after uh, bluegills and all that kind of stuff too. Uh, so what we're going to be using is uh, sparkle yarn and cream. And you can tie these between a 6, uh, and I think I've gotten them down to a 14. On the sparkle yarn, it comes in three, uh, there's three twists to the strand. Uh, when you're using a size 6 or 8, uh, you'll want to use all three of those strands. Um, a 10 and 12, you want to use two of those strands, and a 14, and if you want to try a 16, uh, then you just want to use one one of the strands because uh, it chews up a lot of real estate on the on the underside and it doesn't leave you much gap the thread I'm going to be using for this is um, some ultra thread and rusty brown 140 and I thought I'd already clipped out some wire but I didn't uh, and then the wire I'm going to use for the rib is just an olive uh, brassy size wire UTC uh, I'll go ahead and cut my wire you uh, to do one you want about uh, Oh, probably four and a half, five inches of wire. <clears throat> and then about the same for uh, the distance on your yarn. So what we're going to do is start our thread. Oh, a couple bodkin widths, bodkin and a half width behind the eye. Go about halfway back, trim out the tag. Then we're going to add our wire. I'm just going to put it in right on the underside. I'll just kind of slip that through. Uh, on these guys, you don't really need to have a super neat underbody uh, to make them turn out looking good. And we're going to go pretty far into the bend. Oh, right about there is good. And I'm going to move that wire to the back and get it out of the way. Uh, whoop. I'm going to bring my thread back up to where we started. Uh, and actually, you know, I actually will uh, give myself another bodkin width. I really like the two bodkin widths when we tie in the uh, the sparkle yarn. You could probably get away with doing this with twine, too. And then we'll just uh, go ahead and tie that yarn in and get three or four good wraps right in front. And I'm going to keep this yarn on the top of the shank, winding it back all the way until it meets up with the wire and then you kind of spiral wrap it forward I try to cross over some of those bigger ones just to help lay them down a little bit before you get all the way to the front I come in and um, trim that off at an angle the waist there and then we'll wrap that up these are pretty easy to do uh, and the way I tie them, I mean, you know, these things are pretty durable. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take our sparkle yarn, sparkle yarn, sorry, and we're going to give it a few twists. You want it nice and tight. And we're going to start wrapping it forward. Each time you go around, give it about a twist or a twist and a half. Twist, wrap, twist, wrap twist, wrap, twist. I'm going to do this all the way up to the front. And that's pretty good. This is going to be a little bit bigger head than I want it to be. When you get it to the front, if you need to really twist that guy up, go for it. Let's kind of undo some of these wraps, get back to where we need to be. I like to tie this off on the bottom side, although I'm just not quite where I want to be on that. It's like I misseated it a little bit. I'll catch that, pull it back, bring it under. There we go. That's a little better. And we'll just kind of start tying this off, building a head. 
And on this waist, I'll trim out. And I like to get it close. Uh, and so if you don't have those like micro scissors or something, I'll come in with fingernail clippers and uh, get the rest of it. We're pretty close to the rest of it. Mm, that's good. Now we can just kind of clean up this head by just adding wraps, and we're just going to build the build the head by wrapping all that together. Whoop! Slipped off on me a little bit. Okay. Uh, and now, where's my whip finisher? There it is. Now we can come in. Ah. Losing it here. Well, and we'll do it again. Clean it up. <laughs> I guess my thread's a little wide. We can give it a twist. Get it back into a rope. Come in with my whip finish. Boy, that is just not working for me this time. All right, third time's the charm. I knew that last wrap was going to be a little tight and mess with me. Just a little bit. Bring that back a little. There we go. I'll put in five... I don't know, five to ten whip finishes, something like that. Okay, now you can trim out your thread. Nothing's ever perfect, is it? So, next what you want to do is you want to take a lighter and come in and burn off all this fray. Don't leave that lighter too close for too long, because it'll undo your twine or thread. Next what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the rib and we're going to go the same direction as the uh, as we wrap the yarn and we're just going to put this right, we're going to seat this rib right inside all these turns moving forward to kind of mimic um, the indentations, I suppose, they don't really have a rib necessarily, but they do kind of have this like little, I guess you could call it a rib. A little in between squishy part. When we get up to the front, I'm just gonna take my wire and put two wraps right up into the head. I'm gonna bring my wire down to the bottom side. And I'll take my scissors and I trim that off on the bottom and I'll tuck my thread wrap in there. Uh, next what I'll do is I use some super glue. I'm just gonna use some crazy glue here and we're gonna just kind of brush some crazy glue all over the fly. Uh, and the reason for this in particular is so that uh, when I go to like dab on the feet with a marker um, the marker won't bleed into the material if you don't if you don't do this part uh, the marker will bleed now this glue dries uh, oh, in about a minute and a half or so uh, at least to the point where you can dab the marker so to finish the fly, I'll kind of go ahead and explain how I finish it, which is pretty simple. I'll take some solar res, and I'll, after I've done my uh, marker for the little feet uh, representations underneath the fly, I'll just go ahead and use my solar res to cover the entire fly uh, to coat it, and it makes these things super, super durable. You can uh, you can get into some pretty hefty. Uh, Entanglements, I guess you could say. So I'll just turn my turn this bug to the side, and I'll just kind of come in and start dabbing my marker on the bottom to put it. Oh, oh, got a little heavy. Put in the representation of some feet. 
Now the one thing that you really really want to do is make sure that the super glue we put on is 100% dry before you add the solar res. What happens is, is if it's not, um, those two glues kind of mingle together. And when you take your UV torch to it, uh, it, it doesn't allow the UV resin to uh, dry fully. And, you, and you're really just going to sit there and blast it over and over and over and over. So uh, I let this dry completely for five to ten minutes. And so you can kind of see that there. But when you're done, and we're not going to wait five to ten minutes. And when you're done, it comes out looking like this. It's got the nice little shiny coat on it brown head and you can kind of see the little markings for the feet underneath uh, and these things will last a long time um, and again you can use your you know your favorite scud hook really whatever you like um, depending on how fish uh, deep you want to fish it you can also add some weight um, weight to it you could add uh, wraps of lead use something thin though uh, like a um, a 10 or maybe a 15 lead wire. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have enough uh, gap left over right in there uh, to have some hooking power when you hook up. Uh, if you if it chews up too much real estate, you're, uh, when I call real estate, it's going to be all in this area here down in the gap through the bend. Then uh, you know you, de you decrease your chances of uh, landing what you're going after. So. Anyway, I'm going to let this guy dry. Uh, give it a try. It's a pretty simple little bug to tie. Pretty fun, and uh, they work pretty well. So, uh, yeah, it's just a little millworm grub representation. So, uh, anyway, hope you give it a go, and uh, let me know how you do. Happy tying.